Push and hold the boot selection button and plug your Raspberry Pi Pico into the USB port of your laptop or computer. It will mount a mass storage device called RP1-RP2. Release the boot selection button after your Pico board is connected. Copy the micro python uf2 file. Open the rp1-rp2 device and paste the file. Next, check the driver if it's installed. In Windows 10, the driver is automatically installed, but if you are using a lower version of the Windows, then you will have to manually install the driver. You can download the Atmel Devices CDC driver file from our website. You can find a link in the description. Anyway, the driver is installed and also the MicroPython has been installed on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now I'm going to disconnect the Pico board. Now the final step is to install the Thony IDE and of course you can download this file from our website. There is nothing complicated just follow the same exact steps. Installation is successfully completed and now we can click on the finish button. Open the Tony IDE. Go to the run menu and click on select interpreter. Select MicroPython Raspberry Pi Pico. Now the IDE is ready for the programming. My Raspberry Pi Pico board is ready for its very first project that is blinking the onboard LED. I'm going to connect my Pico board with the laptop. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the LED blinking program. I have this very simple code for blinking the LED. The purpose of this code is to turn on the LED for one second and then turn off the LED for one second. For the line by line code explanation read my article. I will provide a link in the description. To run this code on the Raspberry Pi Pico, simply click on the play button. You will be asked where to save the code file, in the computer or the Raspberry Pi Pico board. You need to select the Raspberry Pi Pico board and the same thing I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Give a name to the file and don't forget to add the .py extension, otherwise the code won't run on the Pico board. As soon as you click the OK button, the LED will start blinking. The LED blinking delay time can be increased or decreased. Right now, the LED is turning on and turning off after every one second. To stop the code, simply click on the stop button and now you can see the LED is not blinking anymore. And of course, if you want to run the code again, then simply click on the play button. It's just that simple. When you save a file on the Raspberry Pi Pico board and you give it a name other than main.py, as in my case, I saved the file with the name LED underscore blinking.py, then such a file needs to be run manually, which is really annoying. Let me do it for you and you will get the idea. I'm going to unplug the USB cable. Ultium 365 lets you hold the fastest design reviews ever. Share your designs from anywhere and with anyone with a single click. It's easy. 
leave a comment taking your teammate and they will instantly receive an email with a link to the design. Anyone you invite can open the design using a web browser. Using the browser interface, you are able to comment, markup, cross probe, inspect and more. Comments are attached directly to the project, making them viewable within Ultim Designer as well as through the browser interface. Design, share and manufacture all in the same space with nothing extra to install or configure. Connect to the platform directly from Ultim Designer without changing how you already design electronics. Ultim 365 requires no additional licenses and comes included with your subscription plan. If you want to start with Ultim Designer, then you can click on the first link in the description. You can see after connecting the USB cable, the LED is off. It's not working. Now what to do? If we want to run the code automatically each time we connect the Raspberry Pi Pico board. For this you don't have to make any changes in the code. All you need is simply resave the file, but this time with the name main.py. So if you want to run your code automatically on the Raspberry Pi Pico, then give it the name main.py. Finally click on the OK button and you are done. You can see the LED is blinking. Now if I unplug the Pico board, you can see the LED is not blinking. And now if I plug it again, the LED will again start blinking. I'm sure you have fully understood how to control the onboard LED and how to save the code file on the Raspberry Pi Pico board. You can always start with this simple getting started project to test your Raspberry Pi Pico board. Anyway, so far everything is done correctly. The micro Python installation is done correctly. The Raspberry Pi Pico driver is working and the Tony IDE is working. Now to use Pico board with external electronic devices, I'm going to solder mail headers. As you can see all the mail headers are soldered and now I'm going to explain how to control an external LED.